listens intently. So it's been a lot slower going since we lost the car, but I suppose it's much more like her actual experience, and, and that's what we wanted to find. So, so I guess it's fitting, in a way. You're on a quest. That's a great honor and responsibility. I'm tired. Maybe I, sh I should rest here for a while, or maybe I've searched long enough, or maybe there's nothing more to find, or maybe I found more than I saw it, or... Maybe you saw it more than you thought. But it seems to me that you need to complete the quest you began before you can see clearly to see the more. Yes. I, I have to find her. I have to find her. Sometimes you have to find someone before you can let them go. I haven't found her yet. He takes her hand and slowly traces her fingers and palm. You will. I can feel I didn't know the palm reading thing was Native American. It's not. He places his hand on her chest. But I can read your heart. Rainier turns to see his sister transfixed, her chest heaving beneath Suaro's easy hand. Rainier smiles and turns back to a new friend. Night, desert bonfire circle. Drums and small, round, gourd-like flutes are played and everyone sings. Rainier and Rebecca follow along as best they can. Everyone else knows the songs. Wind came, clouds came, I sat above them. Underneath the mirage glittered, rain fell, the mirage was gone. The song ends, Rebecca bursts into song, Rainier joins her. The others laugh and keep time with their instruments. A song from their childhood, Babes in the Woods. My dear, do you know how a long time ago two little children whose names I don't know? Night, desert bonfire circle. The natives pass a drug around the circle. Rainier watches as the others partake. The man beside Rainier passes into it. It will show you your dreams. Rainier partakes. Suaro takes several buttons and offers Rebecca some. Uh, what, what is it? It's part of our heritage. Actually, legal here. Uh, it'll make you sick, but it will pass quickly and you'll be sick. Don't take it if you don't feel comfortable. There's no pressure. Rebecca hesitates, then takes it from his hand. She puts it in her mouth and winces, but chews doggedly. Late night around the bonfire, people have broken out into small groups that are talking, dreaming, singing, playing drums and flutes and guitars. Most of the men have their shirts off. Bago Man is teaching and teaching an entranced Rainier how to play the round flute like instrument. Suaro is shirtless and singing. Rebecca watches him, then rises and dances around the firelight. Then away into the darkness among the Suaro cactuses. Suaro rises and follows her, moving slowly and flippantly. Rebecca smiles and raises her arms as she glides further into the shadows. She peels off her shirt and bra and dances mystically with the reed she plucks, painting the stars in the night. Suaro is drawn to her, touching her skin reverently, mesmerized by her arms, breast, ribs, tummy. Alone in the flickering shadows, they dance together in only their jeans, close, but not too close, as their fingers find their searching way across the other's skin, wrapped by the discovery of the other. Early morning, desert bonfire circle. The fires died, and the revelers sleep hither and yon. Rainier's crash with his head on his uh, new friend Pavago's man's boots, and the flute clenched in his hand. On a blanket, Rebecca's curled up against Waro's chest, and arms wrapped around her. Their chests are still bare and pressed together, their dirty jeans still on. Morning at Carol's house. Rainier, Rebecca, and Suaro stroll up, looking like they spent the night under the open sky, which, well, they didn't. Rainier's playing his new native flute, and Carol's now milking her goat. Morning, dears. Good morning, Carol. Good morning, Earth Mother. Carol holds up a bowl, a bowl of warm goat's milk. He's ready for breakfast. Morning in Carol's kitchen. She's serving the breakfast. I have a few things for you to help you along. I made this blanket, and I was waiting to see who it was for. It turns out to be you. Wow, Carol, that's amazing. Carol, you don't need to. Shut up, you're interrupting me. And here's a care package with some sandwiches and snacks, and I got some sodas. Oh, yes! 
this is this is unbelievable. It, it's so nice. Yeah, well, we'll see if you still think so when you've carried it for a couple miles. <laughs> you know, speaking of carrying it, I was wondering if you might want to let me drive you to Apple. I'm on break right now. Rainier looks at his sister. She looks long and hard as well. It's not because I'm nice or anything. <laughs> I just want some of Carol's sandwiches. <laughs> you are as always. As, as tempting as that is, we've made it this far. It feels like it'd be cheating at this point. I'm not trying to run your life, but it's really not safe. We're being really careful. I mean, we only ride with women. And we walk a lot. Okay. A lot. Okay, I, I understand. Uh, then call me when you get to it. He writes up his napkin. Here's my cell phone. Too bad I don't have a cell phone. <laughs> Morning on the outskirts of the reservation town. Their gear on their backs, Rebecca and Rainier head out of their collection of ramshackle reservation homes. Morning in Swallow's <laughs> car. He's on his cell phone as he drives south to the reservation. Hi, Stella. It's Wahado. Jessica's son. Yeah, it's great to be home. Listen, I have a favor. Exterior morning, Swallow's car. San Javier Reservation Road. He's the only car out on the road. The day is already beginning to shimmer with the desert heat. He passes a string of six crosses. Interior, Salado's car. Great. Okay, that's great. Thank you so much, Stella. And I'll come by and fix your fence. But listen, don't mention to them that you know me. You, you have to make it look random. <laughs> Morning on Highway 86, San Javier Reservation. Rebecca and Rainier are trudging west. Rebecca yawns. I see you finally getting away from your education and taking the time to live with it. No, I'm getting quite the education. I can see that. He's nice. I, I really like him. He is nice. And I can see why you like him. And he's maybe just a little bit sexy. Oh my god! I have jelly around him. Like, absolute jelly. So auto jelly. Stop it, <laughs> When they said you could sample the sawano, they meant the wine. Give me a break! I didn't actually... <laughs> didn't really do anything except drop a bunch of hallucinogenics and dance naked under the stars with the most beautiful man you've ever seen. I kept my pants on. How? I don't know. Or why. Besides, you did peyote too. Of course I did. I'm supposed to. You're the good one. Oh. It was good. <laughs> Best night of my life. Best night of my life. How is that? How can I have the best night of my life at the saddest time of my life? If, how can I be so happy when I'm also so sad? That's a weird thing, isn't it? And they're both so real, so wrong. Yeah. Yeah, yes. Somehow, the closeness of death has made me want to live life so much more fully, to savor every moment, even in its pain. Like, like the colors are that much more vivid, and, and I can see them now. Sometimes I just can't handle it, and I shut down. It cuts too deep, but I think I know what you mean. It's made it so damn clear what a total waste it is to waste one moment of your life. Suddenly, at our age, we can see how close death is. I suppose usually it's not until people get older that they realize how short life is and all that old people stuff. It's weird. It feels like we have a bridge to the other side. Yes, yeah, yeah, a, a bridge, a bridge, that's just it, like, like a great secret that's been revealed to us, and it's so strangely beautiful in its aching sadness. People who haven't known such an unbelievable loss wouldn't understand, they'd think, maybe I'm not sad or something. Yeah, I'd never have known the intensity and, and range of feelings. Man, I wish to God she was here to fill them with us. I, I know, Rain. I know. I miss her here. I still can't believe it. Can't believe it. Morning, Highway 86, farther west. They stand at the junction outside of town. Rebecca studies their battered map. <coughs> this goes straight to Aja, where she... Where, where it happened. Wow. 
I can't believe we're so close. It's still over 100 miles. Good. Now that we're almost there, I'm afraid to get there. Midday on Highway 86, still farther west. It's baking hot. They sit on their packs at a desolate junction, not a car in sight. A hot wind blows. Rainier's playing a mournful tune on his new flute. Man. This land doesn't grow much, does it? Nope. Except for broken glass. Rebecca uses her shirt to clean the dust off her scratched up sunglasses. I'm tired of the dust. I feel like I have dust in my soul. Rainier stands up and digs into his bag, pulling out an envelope. He hands it to Rebecca. He has her name on it. What is this? It's from Swan. He asked me to give it to you when you were Oh God, I hope it's not a Dear John letter. I don't know. He gave it to me sealed, and I would have peeked. You bastard. Yep. Rebecca steals herself and slowly opens the envelope. Within a piece of binder, Within, a piece of binder paper, a bunch of cash slips out. Twenties, fives, and ones. What? A note on the sheet of paper reads, This is to help you two on your quest. Wish I'd had more cash on me. I'll eagerly be awaiting the tale of the rest of your journey. XOXO. Oh my god. What? What do you say? She hands him the note and counts the cash. There's $147 in here. Oh my god, I can't believe it. This is great! Man, how nice is that? Gee, Beck, I think maybe he likes you. I wouldn't have taken his money. He knew that. That's why he said it with me. I was worried. I didn't want to be hurt. Yeah, that was a really nice thing to do. Re really nice. I'm sure as hell was. He's a really nice guy. And he likes you. Really nice. Late night in a ditch along Highway 86. They're asleep in their sleeping bags. Heavy clouds roll across the full moon in dry lightning flashes, followed closely by shuddering thunder. But no rain. Rainier mumbles in his sleep, dreaming. Cross fade to Rainier's dream late night in the ditch along Highway 86. Rainier dreams that he's sleeping there on the ground in his bag, and a coyote approaches in the gleaming moonlight. Its eyes reflect those lightning flashes, and it flinches at the sound of the thunder. It sniffs around Rainier, then curls up at his feet and goes to sleep. Crossfade to late night in the ditch along Highway 86. Rainier sits bolt upright out of a sound sleep and looks at his feet, startling the coyote that's sleeping there. The coyote jumps off and runs off across the moonlit desert. Thunder vibrates around him. Rebecca, hey, Beck, wake up, wake up. No, what? What's wrong? No, nothing, it's okay, but you won't believe this. You won't believe it. There, there was a coyote on my feet, sleeping right here on my feet. Dreaming. Yes, I was, but then I woke up and it was really there. I could hear the thunder and lightning in my sleep, and then I realized, wait a minute, that's real. wedding or something and, and she walked up to me just just walked up to me and, and I couldn't believe it and I could I could see her so clearly and I just stood there aghast looking at her saying but 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 and she just kind of smiled sheepishly and said I know I know like she knew she knew she's dead but she said but sometimes I come between sometimes I come by and then, and then I understood, and I, I hugged her, and it was just her, and I could touch her, and see her eyeliner, and everything totally real. And she was smiling, and it was great, and I, I knew, and it was good. Just, it was so good to see her, and it was all okay. And I can't believe it. Oh my god, I can't believe it. You know what this was, babe? This was one of those Native American visions. And we both had them. You know how they believe that some dreams are a vision or a visit from the spirit? Our dreams were real. Our dreams were real and they were a message, a true message. Yeah. 
That's it, it was real. Your coyote and Rachel. 